so you have already done two factors with no replications and that means there were no errors basically everything added up to zero and so on and so forth with replications we are going to get errors and once we get the errors we can have confidence intervals f test so on and so forth this is state forward extension so the model becomes um, for two factors the model becomes mu plus alpha j plus beta i plus gamma i j which was there actually in the, no, this actually interaction and this is the error so this is i and j this is j and this is i and then you get the errors right so basically the alpha is beta is as well as gamma is added up to zero the alpha beta add up Zero and then gamma are up to gamma are actually a matrix, two dimensional matrix. So they are each row and each column are up to zero. We'll see in an example there. And here is up to zero as well. And so what you do is you do the averaging, and if you average along different dimensions, that will have an i, j, and k. I is the first factor, j, or j, j is the first factor, i is the second factor, and the k is the replication. So here is an example. We have five workloads and four processors, three replications. For each combination, we have three of them. So first thing we do is we take the mean of three. And once we take the mean, um, actually, hold on. This is processor workload and, and the code size. And, uh, so there is something like 10,000 versus some number here, uh, smallest is um, some number here. But basically, this is, um, I think, something similar we have seen before, and we said we need to take a log. So this one, we take a log, and now we take the mean of taking the log, which is a multiplicative model. So we, we take the mean of these three, and we get one number, like the 3.84278, which is the mean of 8455-8199-8234. All right, so we have 15 means. We put them here and do the analysis as before. Row sum, mean, row mean, column sum, column effect, and so on and so forth, just like that. So now you get the effects. All right, but now you have some more errors as well, which you will see in the next slide. But the because of this um, thing, you can make a statement about the effects. And just like in the previous, you know, before the exam, we talked about how do you get the value of the effect. It's the log base 10. So we take the power to the 10, 0 0.2304, and gives you 1.69 less code. So this is basically minus will be 1 upon 1.69. And uh, this is minus 0 to is 1.05 less, and so on and so forth. So you just talk in terms of the ratios. Everybody getting in that ratio part? Right, okay. Now the thing is interactions because, um, yeah. I'm sorry, product what? Processor Y. Y is here. W is here. Why is negative? Actually, I mean, all I'm doing here is you can put minus 0 0.03 and you will get 1 upon 1.69. I'm just saying 1.69 less. You would say 1 upon 1.6 more. So I'm just transferring the negative to here. <laughs> this is negative, yeah. All right. So now the thing is that um, you can also get the interactions um, the by if we, uh, hold on this is workload i j k l m and you pass a w x y z and then if you were to go back and subtract the column effect and so basically if you remember the formula here uh, let me go back to as much as you can go back. Here, if I subtract mu 
alpha j and beta i, then I get gamma i j, right? So we do that. So we get the interaction, mean interaction, because you take the mean of all three, right? These are the mean interactions. And there are things. For example, minus 0 0.01212 comes by subtracting 3.9423 and 0 0.1520 and minus 0 0.234. So you just add up these three numbers and subtract from that, and you will get this number. Similarly, for the others, you just subtract the main effects and the and the mean. So you get this interaction. So these are the interaction values. Now you can look at the interactions and you can get similar statements. For example, workload I and processor W, workload I, the first one, requires 0 0.0 less log code size. So you are just taking power of 10 to make the statement and so on and so forth. So, then we calculate the errors. So the errors come out, you know, if you just go back to the three values in each, and you subtract all three, you subtract the non mean, you subtract alpha j, you subtract beta i, and you subtract gamma i. All of those you subtract, you get the errors. Um, actually, let me see if I can find that table. Oh no, you can't find a table here. So um, basically, now that you have these values, to go back to the original table, which was three entries, here from each entry you subtract what was the predicted value, which would be, you know, grand mean plus alpha j plus beta plus gamma j. You get three error values. Those three error values will add up to zero. Each of those three errors, so you will get 15, you will get 15 such times three, 45 error values. No, not 15, 5 times 4, 20. 20 cells, each cell has three values, you will get 60 error values. But they will add up to zero and the groups are three. These three will add up to zero, these three will add up to zero, and so on and so forth. So, so let's see. That gives you um, some of the squared errors. You just get some of the squared errors. They will follow this formula. SST is equal to SST plus SSD plus SSD plus SSD. Plus SSD. Okay. This is very similar to H2. When you have two H2 two formula, 2 raised to 2 R, this is the same thing here, although the number of levels is not equal to 2. And, uh, and then the question is, so you can see that, that A is the most, has the most effect, B has second effect, C doesn't, A, B doesn't matter, and C does not matter. Then we do this statistical test by finding the degree of freedom. And key thing to notice is that each of these add up to zero, so they have a minus one degree of freedom. They add up to zero, so a minus one degree of freedom. This one gets a minus one times b minus one, and the errors get a b times r minus one because out of twenty, only two are independent. In each of the twenty cells, two are independent. Third one is zero, so third one is r minus one basically. That gives you degree of freedom by sub dividing you get b square error by dividing sum of square by degree of freedom. And then by dividing in RDMS by FS, you get an F test where the proper degrees of um, numerator degrees and number degrees you can see whether it's statistically significant. The ANOVA value, ANOVA factor, which is very similar to the one we did before with replications. You have MSD, MSD, MSAB. And um, then there's an example. If we continue. Now the F value in the table are very small. These are very large, and therefore this is a good model. You know, particularly after the lab. Then there are parameters, if the formulas for confidence intervals for effect. And, and there is example. I think I don't know whether we need to go to confidence intervals. I mean, by now it is all very clear. The U test after almost very similar to what we had. Now main thing I would be able to read this if this was below means it is the, the measured values are below the normal values. So this will be going below the normal curve. Yes. This will be going above the normal curve. Yeah, exam, yeah. Eh? 
Yeah, this is very linear. This is much more linear. And and, um, and then again, this one passes the same test point, 0.5 to 450. Yeah, I mean, the base was higher. In the exam, it was lower and was below. The upper end was higher. Yeah, you could have a combination too. You could have a combination where higher and lower ends. No, there are all possibilities. All right, and that brings me to the end. See? Which is straightforward. Basically, you have now gamma, I, J, E, G, K, A, E, 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 R, S, and then the exercise and the homework. So now you can do the homework.